And it is with great pleasure that I now introduce to you the 19th head coach in Ball State men's basketball history, James Whitford. I stand here, and I truly mean this, humbled and honored to be the next head coach at Ball State. The vision for really with our staff is about being great in three areas, and that's being great in recruiting, having a system, an offense, and a defensive system that I really believe in, and then player development. It's my first time through it as a head coach. So knowing how to sell our culture to our players, that was something I, I didn't really have ready. I would have thought I did, but looking back upon it, I could have done it a lot better. It was definitely different, you know, for the team because everybody was trying to get adjusted because I know uh, some of the guys were here when Billy Taylor was here and they said he played a lot slower. It was, it was just like a big difference in the change from Billy Taylor to Coach Whitford. Losing was, that was probably the most frustrating thing ever. I was definitely frustrated because I had came from my, my, my high school program. We were actually pretty successful and I didn't lose that much in high school. Our potential was really good. Like if you looked at our lineup, you know, with Z and Jesse and CB, I think Majuk and Frank, you would think that we'd be pretty good, but it was just kind of hard for us to jail that first year, which is was kind of expected. It really depends on how you do on game day, how hard you're going to go out and compete. And you can have all the talent in the world. If you don't go out and compete, then you're not going to do good. But I felt like my team's freshman year, I felt like we were talented enough to compete with any team, but I felt like we just didn't compete and live our lives the right way. You know, that first year was kind of rough, but it was definitely a learning experience for all of us. I think those first two years were good for me and Coach Whitford to just turn the program around and really start building and working hard to turn it around. He's a leader by example. He's kind of one of those ones that doesn't speak a lot, but when he does it, it carries a lot of weight. You know, he's one of the hardest working guys on the team, his self-discipline with his nutrition. It's very hard to do with the amount of time he invests on his shot. Coach Witt, he just, um, he really lives his, his life, I feel like, and he preaches it, being all about the process. And it's something that I look at him and I say, he's all about the process, on off the floor. He's constantly thinking about basketball more than anybody I would probably say. I just look at it as if my coach is doing that, then I should probably put it in just as much work and if not try to work harder than him. He's got a few point guard qualities to him. I mean, he's, a, he's a really good passer. He can handle the ball in tight situations. Last year, he was really the only playmaker on the court for us. This year, we have two. Taylor can be a playmaker, and Franco can be a playmaker. When we don't have him, that's, that's really the part of him that we miss. He's deeply respected by his, his teammates. I really think that's something that I take with me today is I think about where I was my freshman year and how out of shape I was. And like when I do get tired, for the most part, I can push through it because I know when I was, at, when I was overweight in order to keep up with the other guys, which I never wanted to be behind, I had to run as hard as I could every time and lift as hard as I could every time and just try to uh, differentiate myself in a different way since my conditioning wasn't necessarily the best.
defining moment for our team because I'm saying the same stuff. We play to our ability, we will win this game. But we got to play better on the offense, man, out there. Let's go. It was a good win for sure. The Indiana State was because they're an in-state rivalry. It's a program we really respect, and we played pretty good basketball up until Christmas that year. Yeah. The toughest part was, yeah, I think as that year went on, is me looking at within our own culture and not feeling like we were we were all in at all, in a way that I wouldn't have even necessarily felt in the first year, and I felt we were dysfunctional. the toughest part of our, our losing streak. My freshman year was probably, I mean, obviously everyone was talking about, you know, kind of talking about it. You know, you see, you know, they broke the record for most losses consecutively. That was frustrating for sure. You know, some of this stuff was beyond our control. Matt Kamenicki, who was a good player, had gotten hurt. We'd lost Jeremy Tyler at the semester academically. And, uh, you know, we'd had Jeremiah and Francis would had both broken bones in their legs in the summer and the fall. That's part of any college basketball season. Back my freshman year, we were a really, really young team, made a lot of mistakes. It's what I believe, first of all, is that I don't care if you're 20 and five or five and 20, and I believe in being consumed with the process of getting better. And that's a, that's a life value for me, something I think is really important in sports. But the reality is you have no other choice, <laughs> you know, so every coach that goes through it has to do the same thing. Um, probably, I'd say probably just keeping a, a, try to keep a positive mindset about it, you know, taking it day by day, knowing that, dang, we've lost 8, 12, 14 games in a row. We got, we got another game, we can't, we can't have a negative mindset like, oh, we're going to lose this game before it even starts, you know. I thought that was a big thing that helped us improve is just learning from our mistakes and guys coming out and compete every day. Now the second lesson for me was that I had to be more demanding on the, the cultural things that I really believed in. I had to hold the standards uh, to the level that I felt like they had to be in order for us to really win. And, uh, and I didn't do a good enough job of that in the second year. For me, honestly, I didn't really know what to expect, you know, being a freshman. After probably the third or fourth game, I didn't really feel like a freshman because I was playing 30 plus minutes. And, you know, coach told me early on that I needed to be a, a heavy, heavy contributor because we were in a very deep team. So every time I got a good look, I thought I had a good look, I was going to shoot it. And I kept getting good looks, I just kept shooting. My role last season was, was, was tough at the beginning. Really, honestly, nothing I've ever experienced. I've always, I've always been a starter or a, or a big, big time contributor. I had a lot of, a lot of uh, come to Jesus moments with Coach. You know, he'd gotten into a point where he wasn't playing much. It wasn't easy for him and it's not easy for any of them. You know, they're all stars in high school and, and they're, none of them are used to coming off the bench. But after a little adjustment period, to me, he really embraced it and uh, he started competing every day in practice. And it's not just about sending a message to the, you know, the coaches and your teammates that you want to play. It's about getting better. Try to keep a positive mindset about it, you know, taking it day by day. Not giving up myself, just keep pushing it, you know, things are going to turn out for the better. Um, you know, unfortunately they did for me and they also turned out a lot better for our team as well. The biggest difference is he's, be he's become our go-to guy on defense on the perimeter. I got great trust in his ability to guard the ball, and that was that was his Achilles heel. I think the biggest thing that clicked for me was just not worrying about whether or not I'm making a mistake or making or missing shots. You know, not worrying about my playing time, not worrying about how much I score or what I do, just trying to do the little things, you know, try to talk on defense, communicate, get rebounds. 
and then you know everything else take care of itself. K Bob off the court is a really funny dude. Really good person. He's one of I'd say probably one of my best friends. I definitely say guys kind of treat me as the, the little brother of the team, I guess. Even as a senior, I'm still kind of the little brother. And I don't know if that's because I'm small or whatever, but I mean, it's all good. I've just kind of embraced that role, and everybody likes me and stuff, so I don't have any problems with anybody. It's just kind of a role I embraced. Caleb's, he's one of the most unselfish guys. He's, he's, I, he's probably the best walk on I've ever coached in 21 years. And he does everything with a smile, with a great attitude. He's a great teammate. Scout team guys, we just run like the other team's plays. So if we're running Kent State, like we'll run Kent State's plays. We'll uh, imitate their players. So if a guy has tendencies to drive right or something, like they'll tell us, hey, this guy drives right a lot. So you need to do that. And that just helps those guys in the game be able to get used to, you know, guarding those guys in an actual game. Being a walk-on is often a thankless job. You know, you're doing, you're always the scout team. You're always you know, working on the things that aren't preparing you personally for the game. Your job is only to prepare the rest of the guys for the game. He lifts every time they lift. He wakes up at six every time they wake up at six. He conditions every time they condition. I would say my motivation is just, you know, just to finish strong. Like I, I've been here all three years and I just want to, I just want to leave here knowing that I did everything that I can. I really want to go to Cleveland at least once, so I hope hopefully we can uh, get a MAC championship, or uh, win the MAC West, or maybe even get to the NCAA tournament or the NIT. But I just I just want the team to succeed at the end of the day, and I just really want to go to Cleveland, and maybe even maybe win the MAC championship. That's the ultimate goal. I couldn't speak more highly. I'm, someone's going to hire Caleb one day, and they're going to be it's going to be the best hiring decision they've ever made. The roster was right for the first time. You know, we'd made progress with the roster in the year before. And this time we had depth for the first time. We had Jeremy Francis, Sean we all had had a whole year under their belt with us. You had Ryan Weber come in as an older guy, Franco, a three-year starter. Both been with us for three years. You started to have some experience. Felt like we had good chemistry. Everybody was playing together. Nobody was selfish. Everybody, everybody seemed to be having fun on the court when somebody else was doing good. You let them know. I, I mean, I like that about last year's team. I thought our staff did a better job of, of uh, of getting the culture where we felt like we needed to be or really or of making that a bigger priority and selling it. And I thought our players had great buy-in to what we were trying to do. Practice culture was a big thing. I thought that um, we, we had the right attitude every day in practice. So we had a lot of guys competing for, and it was a competitive practices at every position. You were competing for playing time. And, I felt like that uh, made the prices better. Probably the final final piece to that turnaround in year three that I, I think is worth being talked about is the leadership of Bo Calhoun and Franco House. The leadership they both had by example. Bo Calhoun, obviously, uh, he's a great leader. He's talking, he's always bringing energy. He's a plus one guy. Every day, if I was down or if I wasn't energetic, I could count on him to bring some energies. Uh, Bo being a guy that had developed as much as he had in three years. He gained 20 pounds of muscle. He developed as a three-point shooter, two things that he wouldn't have had as a freshman or a sophomore. And his, uh, his impeccable work ethic, and really the same with Franco. And I thought the leadership of those two guys really moved the needle in a real positive direction for us. You're in a postseason tournament, you play good competition. And I think we, we proved, probably most importantly to ourselves, that we not only belonged in that tournament, we were as good as anyone in that tournament. Went to Columbia, the team that won the whole thing and led for 38 minutes there on the road. Uh, I think we proved to everybody that, that you know, we'd had a good team and had a good year.
Kyle's doing great. I think Kyle's Kyle's really impressed everybody. He's certainly impressed me. He's got a little toughness to him. Doesn't back down. Has courage, and uh, and he can play. But for a freshman, he doesn't back down. You know, and that's a real good sign. I think you know just to be out there, just to be a college player has been a dream, pretty much for you know a lot of high school guys, you know, especially me and. Uh, you know, just to be out there has been awesome, and to be a part of it, Hoosier hysteria or whatever, has been, you know, a big accomplishment for me. And our high school went from being not so good to being a really good team towards when I was a junior and a senior. Just to kind of see people jump onto our team and kind of show up to more games and just watch us get better was Good to be part of. Kyle hasn't surprised me one bit, and I watched him play a lot in uh, in AU and high school both. But he's got a great mind for the game, good size, a guy that can make a shot. But he brings a guy that can really pass, catch, shoot, dribble, play the game the right way, and does his job really well. Regardless of what level you're going to, in middle school to high school is going to be a jump, and I knew high school to college was going to be a, you know, a bigger jump. It's the speed of the game and you know, the type of players that you're dealing with. They're very talented, and uh, you just kind of adjust to that, and got to come into every practice ready to work. And you know, it's been definitely an adjustment uh, compared to high school. Coming off the bench is a little bit different than, you know, just starting and being out there. But no, I was just thinking, you know, when I get in, give good minutes and, uh, you know, do my job and be ready to knock down shots if I'm open. I watched Taylor a lot in AU because he played on the same AU team as, as Sean Sellers. And then he went to Northern Kentucky and, and had an unbelievable freshman year, unbelievable. Followed his progress, I knew he was from here and I couldn't believe uh, how well he was doing. And so when he decided to transfer, you know, we called and, and we'd heard he was transferring and we called and got a release. I reached out to his dad, Doug. He said, coach, I just got one question for you. Why didn't you recruit him the first time? If you know Doug, he's very direct. And I said, hey, Doug, I said, obviously, I messed that one up. But you got my word, I'm not going to mess it up this time. If he doesn't come here, it's not going to be for lack of effort on our part. Uh, my role is just to be a guy that comes in and plays hard for 40 minutes. Uh, be a leader on the floor as a point guard, that's like a main job for the point guard. And then just, you know, lead the team, whatever it needs, you know, get guys involved and uh, score on my own. The hardest part about sitting out would definitely be just seeing the guys when we lose, lose some games, thinking I could help them out, and just not being able to play and being competitive again. It was it kind of sucked just being in practice all the time, but uh, it was it was a year that I learned a lot, and I'm thankful for it. Definitely working on just taking care of the ball. Um, it's been a big key like emphasis for our team. Make smart decisions. Just make. Uh, don't go for the home run play every time. Just hit singles, and uh, that's what I'm trying to do. Well, I learned a lot about myself just from like outside of basketball. What I'm going to do, try to be for the rest of my life, and just got the love for the game back. You know, I love playing, and I'm just excited to be back. We're gonna go. You gotta get a stop to go to offense. You gotta get a stop to go to offense. For us, setting our man defense is always a huge priority. We, uh, we pride ourselves on that, and lately we've, we've gotten a lot better. I think just at every spot, individually, everybody elevated their game. TP will definitely help out a lot. He's a good driver because he's a big body, so he'll be able to dish off the Frank and Trey and Tajay or whoever's playing. He's 
great point guard. He worked on the shooting for a whole year. Taylor adds that, that toughness, um, especially coming at the point guard spot. Um, plays super, super hard. I mean, he does a really good job of getting in the lane. And uh, that just spreads the defense out anymore, so it creates so many more opportunities for our team. And we tip off the 2016-17 season. Inside Worthen Arena for the third straight in-state matchup for Ball State men's basketball. It's the Ball State Cardinals taking on the IUPUI Jaguars. They start with Darrell Combs at the point guard. He's their leading scorer, 16 points per game. Moses on a slip to the baseline. He dunks it two hand. <laughs> The Ball State lead, eight minutes to go first half. Sellers pops a three left wing, and that goes down. What an offensive show we're seeing here in this four-minute stretch. Matt O'Leary is certainly feeling it, 14 points. Ball State on the charge from left to right up by five. Weber transition three, right wing, and he sinks it. All net for Ryan Weber, who's starting to find his stroke from distance. So Ball State goes into the break up seven. 36 to 29 over IUPUI. IUPUI has made things interesting here at the midway point of the second half. Ball State 53, IUPUI 48. This is the slimmest it's been in quite some time. Ball State's lead was once 11. Now it's IUPUI plus two. It's really been all Darrell Combs. He now has 21 in the game. Backdoor cut for Hall, and he slams it home. And that's the ball game. IUPUI steals one on the road, 73-62 to over Ball State, and avenge their loss here last year. It's a long season. We still have plenty of time, but we have to be... We have some real warts that we got to correct, and uh, and we get this is a really, really, really critical month for us to get better. You know, we, we played a very good first half. I thought we came out and they made some tough shots, and uh, you know, we didn't react really well. I don't. I wouldn't say that we were down as a team. I just feel like we were afraid to make bad plays down the stretch. We came here to win a MAC championship, man. That's a long way away. We just got to keep getting better and better and uh, learn from our mistakes. God would say confidence is earned, not given. You know, where real confidence comes from is being honest with each other about the things you didn't do, working to fix them, and then entering the next game knowing that you prepared the right way.
for us. We've got to be honest with each other. Hey, this is where we're at. These are the things we've got to knock out. We all know we're capable of being better than we've been so far this year. And let's build and take some steps in the right direction. And you put them together enough days like that in a row, that's, that's where you really make progress.